if there is no patient or people who are ill, no medical institutions will be necessary. No doctors, no pharmacist, and all the hospitals if nobody is ever ill. <clears throat> That's common sense, isn't it? And if all human beings are happy in paradise or heaven, no religion will be necessary. Of course, uh, uh, different religions have different view of the world and uh, Different religions have different dogmas. You know, dogmas are the, the collection of propositions which are not open to scientific, scientific uh, proof or, or, or verifications. And you know, if those religious dogmas are open to proof, then the religion will disappear. Isn't that correct? Like uh, the definition of, of God is God is omnipotent, omniscient, and all good. Fortunately, there is no way of proving or disproving of the proposition. So all the religious dogmas are um, body of propositions which are not open to proof. Buddhism also has a dogma. Uh, there is the dogma is on the, uh, the view of metempsychosis or reincarnation. That is the, the heart of the Buddhist dogma. All other things can be uh, proven or disproven by scientific. Today, the topic of my talk is uh, a proposition which uh, late Professor Charles Fu of Temple University in his article on the philosophy East and West wrote. And uh, the proposition is this. Shunyata works wonders in daily life. Are you following me? What is a shunyata? Shunyata is emptiness. Emptiness. Not void, it's emptiness. As you just recited the Heart Sutra, form is identical with emptiness, and emptiness is identical with form. Philosophically, that is the heart of the uh, Hatha Sutra. But religious point of the whole teaching is the proposition, Avalokitesvara, the Bodhisattva, delivered himself from all distress and suffering by clearly seeing that the five aggregate skandhas are all empty. That's the heart. Very important point of the whole Heart Sutra. You understand what it means. The Buddha taught there is no ego, putkala in Sanskrit, no self, which was a challenge to Brahmanism started with the Veda through Upanishad. They taught that there's a Brahman as the ultimate reality of the universe, and the subjective aspect of the Brahman is Atman in oneself. This Atman is never born, nor will it die. And the purpose of a goal of the 
like a, a practice of Vedanta, you know, Vedanta is to is the realization, experience, realization of the identity of Brahman and Atman. There was, but there was taught in eighth century by Shankara, Advaita Vedanta. But before that, the Buddha 2,500 years ago said simply, there is no such a thing as Atman. So the main point is Anatma, no self, no eternal self. You can see how revolutionary it could be in Indian society. So Shunyata means emptiness. Now, emptiness, you know, works wonders in daily life. So we have to figure out what the emptiness means uh, today. Uh, sometimes it takes a whole semester of uh, uh, the college to explain what this uh, shunyata means because there are so much sources and theories. And that to understand it properly, you have to understand Nagarjuna. You know, Nagarjuna, you've heard Nagarjuna in his doctrine of the mean and so on. Normally, the one book uh, takes the whole semester at the uh, seminar. But how can I uh, prove to you that uh, Shunyata works wonders in daily life? But uh, I'll do. There was a, a, a samurai in Japan named Nobushige, he was a quite a well-known uh, samurai. You know samurai? Samurai. He heard about the teaching of Buddhism, and especially at that time, there's a Zen master, Hakuin. You have heard Hakuin. Hakuin is the one who invented the Zen conundrum. What is the sound of one hand clapping? You have heard of that, haven't you? What is the sound of one hand clapping? That is by Hakuin. So this samurai went to uh, Hakuin to learn something. And he introduced himself to, to uh, Zen master Hakuin and said, I want to learn. No, rather than uh, saying that, he asked right away, is there such a thing as a heaven? And is there such a thing as a hell? Okay, right away. Is there such a thing as a heaven and, and a hell? And then Hakuin all of a sudden, you know, changing his face like a furious, and, and, and said to uh, uh, Dobushi, Nobushige, what kind of a numbskull are you? You look like a beggar. You know, beggar in Japan and in Korea are the, you, you know, these days you have people on the street do you have a dime? Used to be, do you have a dime? Homeless, you know? But these days, uh, do you have a dollar? Okay. Those are beggars. So Hakuin told uh, uh, to Dobushki, you look like a beggar. Who would hire you as a bodyguard? The guy who hire you will be a real stupid one. That made him outrageous, you know, angry, like that. And then started to draw his sword, okay? Because so angry. And then Hakuin said, here opens the gate of hell, okay? After hearing this, uh, Nobushike was very much impressed by the calmness, serenity. Even though he showed a, 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 like a, you know, f fury in his face at the beginning, so quiet. A, a, and when he uh, drew the sword, he was not moved at all and simply said, here opens the gate of hell. And Nobushige was so impressed by that. So instead of uh, you know, drawing the sword completely, he uh, put it back. 
Normally in, in the logistical sense, the, uh, the, 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 uh, um, if you are somebody, if you uh, draw the, the sword, then you have to cut something, right? That's the normal uh, ethics of, 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 of a sword ship. But he put it back and then bowed. And, and then uh, Hakuin said, here opens the gate of paradise, heaven. Okay? Why am I saying this? Because at that moment, uh, Nobushiki didn't have the idea of this emptiness. But the point I'm making is this, from Hawaiian Sutra. Hawaiian Sutra, you have uh, on my, um, the next uh, 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 paragraph there, Hawaiian Sutra, the four line stanza of the Hawaiian Sutra. If one wishes to have a thorough knowledge of all the Buddhas of the three time periods, past, present, and the future, then one should see or observe the nature of Dharma realm. Dharma realm is, uh, if you are enlightened, you'll see this whole universe, all the beauty is none other than the manifestation of or smiling face of Dharmakaya Vairochana Buddha, you will see there. But if you are not enlightened, if your mind is beclouded, covered with all the dirts, then you just don't see it. Okay? So observe, see the nature of Dharma. What is the nature though? Fazang, the fifth. Pastor, the third patriarch of Hawaiian Buddhism said, everything in the universe is identical. Identical in being empty of their phenomenal reality. Did you get it? Everything is what? Identical with everything else. So there's only one thing, reality, and that is emptiness. So everything is identical with everything else, in being empty of their own reality. Isn't it beautiful? So he says, why? Because the, everything is the creation of your mind. Everything is. So either you are going to create a heaven or a hell, it all depends what kind of mind do you have. Some people simply create hell all the time with millions of dollars, driving Mercedes-Benz, driving a Bentley, and so on. They live in hell. You agree with me, don't you? Hundreds of thousands of them. While some other people who are not very rich, barely, you know, make uh, 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 both ends meet, but they live in paradise. Why? They have the mind which can change even hellish world to a paradise. They have at the bottom of their heart what you call shunyata, emptiness. They have the wisdom, wisdom. Now, shunyata, emptiness is the content of wisdom. You just read, uh, you know, Prajna Paramita Hridaya Sutra, Heart Sutra, emptiness. You see? Form is identical with emptiness. Emptiness is identical with form. Here, form is material body. And uh, five skandhas, five aggregates are all empty of reality. Fortunately, anger, greed, greed, anger, and the delusions are empty of their reality. Suppose anger, greed are not empty of reality. They have their own substance. Substance means that which exists in itself, by itself, without depending on anything else, there's a substance. And you know French philosopher Descartes, what did Descartes say? Cogito ergo sum. I think therefore I am, you heard of that. The philosopher uh, uh, Descartes said, he gave the definition of substance. Substance is that which exists in itself, by itself, 
without depending on anything else. And then he said, there isn't a single substance in the world. Why? All things in the world are created by God. And there's only one substance, and that is God. Why? Only God can exist in himself, by himself, without being created by anything else. Are you following me? That's what French philosopher Descartes said. By the way, when he wrote the meditations, he wrote in Latin, not in French. So we read uh, English translation, sometimes English translation from Latin, written by Descartes, sometimes from translation from French. F French was the translation of the, of the Latin, you know? The point is this. There is not a single thing which has its own substance. They are empty, shunyata, empty of their own reality. So fortunately, you know, my anger, my stupidity, my greed is also empty of reality. Even though when it arises, it is very powerful. Like in the blue sky, when the, the clouds, you know, came into being and sometimes a thunder, right? Thunder. Look at the tornado. Air without which you cannot live. I thought my life is something valuable, important, something of significance, but totally insignificant in the sense that if I fail to inhale after exhalation, what happens? I'll be dead flat. It doesn't take many, many seconds. Simply dead. Why? Our brain needs oxygen, which you absorb from the air. Okay, that air. Such a good thing. But when it condenses, it becomes a tornado. And I'm very sorry for those people living in the tornado alley. You know the tornado alley? Kansas. Wizard of Oz, you know the Wizard of Oz? The movie. Kansas. Uh, and Oklahoma, and sometimes goes to uh, Michigan and Ohio. Anyway, that's my point. So you see, some people have their mind like a tornado, destroy everything, destroy their family too, don't they? By doing what? By doing stupid things, stupid things. They become what is called a slave to the three poisons, mental poisons, which are the ultimate cause of all human misery, individual or collective. If the leader of a country suffers from the three poisons, he destroys, he kills hundreds of thousands of people. And what are the three poisons? You know. What are they? As written by the Buddha, said by the Buddha, you find it in the Dhammapada, small Buddhist ethic book, Dhammapada. Ultimate cause of human misery are threefold. Greed, 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 anger, hatred, anger. And then delusions, or stupidity, foolishness, ignorance all put together. If we examine the ultimate cause of all human misery, according to the Buddha, we come down to this three poisons. Okay? So uh, we have to watch all the time whether uh, I somehow uh, hide uh, those three poisons. This is from uh, one Buddhist uh, master, the third patriarch, Tesan said, you know, stupid people are like someone who have a feces, you know, feces coming out of your belly, uh, wrap it up with a satin or silk, beautiful color, okay? Wrap it up and uh, store in your closet. And then once in a while you take it out and smell it. <laughs> okay? Many people just do it. Many people do it. Why don't you throw it away instead of uh, 
The funny thing is, you wrap it up with a satin or silk with a beautiful color, and, and, and then take it out, smell once in a while. Our mind, in our mind, there are such a thing as three poisons which are just like that. How do you know? If somebody insults you, make you angry, right away you just explode into anger and show, and say things which you regret. So, um, the Hawaiian Sutra, there are, you know, the, this is uh, uh, called the four-line stanza of the whole uh, Hawaiian Sutra, which is very big. And uh, it says, everything is the creation of your mind. So whether you are going to create a, a heaven or not, it all depends how your mind functions. If your mind is covered up with the fishes, okay, if your mind is wrapped, covered up with the three poisons of greed, anger, and the foolishness, you're going to create hell all the time. This is a wonderful world. Wonderful world. Better than heaven of God. You see, this wonderful world, but simply people live in a hell because of their mind. They don't see this beauty. You know, it's a sad. And you know, like uh, Saddam Hussein, he was a slave to his own three poisons. It smelled very bad. He was hiding somewhere and they took it out. How? He became greedy and tried to annex Kuwait, right? So what happened? World opinions critic. Oh no no no! You shouldn't do it. Then what? What happened to him? Anger. See? So what happened? Desert storm. You know what desert storm is? 1991, when the senior Bush was the president. And how many people killed the Iraqis? 100,000 young Iraqis were killed by one man's greed and anger. And you know, human history, out of 3,000 years, there are only 200 or some 50, 70 years when there was no war. The whole 3,000 years of humanity, human, is always this war, and it's still going on. Still going on. All this is because of what? The fishes, they are hiding, wrapped very nicely uh, in, in satin and, and, and the silk. I said, if there is no one ill, we don't need medical institutions, no doctors. So, in the human world, there are two kinds of illness. One is the spiritual illness, the other one physical illness. For the physical illness, we have cancer, heart attack, and, and so on. If you discover the cancer cells early, then doctor uses what is called a German Messer, M-E-S-S-E-R, Messer, German. You know, doctor's uh, operating knife, cut it off. In spiritual disease also, we need a doctor's Messer. And that is supposed to be the doctrines, dogmas of our religion. One Buddhism, one Buddhism is a circle Buddhism. Okay, circle. You see in my back, circle. That is a finger pointing to your own perfectly enlightened Buddha mind. If you see it, you are lucky. If you don't see it, you have to do all you can to discover your own Buddha mind. Many people are like dreaming, have a nightmare. While you are having nightmare, you don't know that you are having a nightmare. You take everything real, right? And then uh, only when you wake up, oh my gosh, it was fortunately a, a dream, okay? 
And the Buddha said, the world, world, to those people who are deluded, are like they are dreaming in the nightmare, but they don't know. So what is the duty or obligation of a religion? To wake him up. Wake him up. Also, deluded people have their mind dark, completely dark. So what is the role and obligation of a religious institution? Is to provide the light which drives out the darkness and wake him up. So here, the first paragraph, this is the, from the second patriarch of one Buddhism, who was the chief codifier of the doctrine of one Buddhism, who said, keep your mind as broad as the empty sky. Empty again, you see, empty. When isn't the sky empty? When there's clouds. Clouds which cover up the sun and the moon, the darkness. Second says, brighten the mind as bright as the sun and the moon. moon. Okay. The main point of the Buddhist teaching is to brighten the mind with wisdom. Okay, the wisdom. And uh, drive the mind as leisurely as a stream. Some people have like a dead wood which breaks very easily. I mean, get angry so fast, quickly. You know, that's going on everywhere all the time, this anger. And the psychologist uh, claimed that the most difficult emotion to control is anger. Anger, this is from some psychology. Anger is like a, like a mine, you know the mine explosion? Everywhere, mine. Your, your, your workplace, even fam family, home life. There are all kinds of mines, and if you step on it, it explodes. There's emotion of anger. And uh, if we can, we have to find out what could be the doctor's messer which cut off the source of the anger, okay, anger. So the, now the issue is, the, okay, fine. Uh, it's one thing that uh, to, to, tell, to tell you to keep your mind as broad as the uh, empty sky and uh, brighten your, your mind wisdom as bright as the sun and the moon and, and also drive your mind as leisurely as, uh, as uh, a stream. In a stream, doesn't fight with uh, uh, the bank. If the bank turns, it just follows. Good personality never fights that, that one. But uh, when I am in adverse conditions or trying situations, I can't help it, so I become angry and become stupid and dark and so on. My Buddha mind, the Buddha nature, is all blocked. Well, what should I do? <clears throat> so today I am trying to uh, find an answer uh, for that to you. Okay? At the Buddha's time, there was a, like a billionaire, very rich man, okay? This is the story from the, the Buddha. Uh, the rich man had four wives. Have you heard of that, anybody? A billionaire who had four wives. The first wife he loved most. Loved so much that, oh, uh, he combed her, washed her hair, and uh, put all the makeups and, and so on, and gave all the goodies, lobster tails, and uh, it was called the, the, the steak, you know, the, the best steak, and so on. Give all the good clothes and so on. Okay? Day and night, just like that. He was really attached. 
and he was afraid of anybody uh, hurt her, okay? I mean, I don't, we can spend the whole day talking about what he did to, to his wife, but never mind. Second wife, she was very attractive, and many people tried to uh, take her away from, from him. So he had to fight all the time, you see, to keep, to, to keep her safe. Sometimes hiding her in a certain closet like that, okay? And then many people have a, like a crush on, crush on her. Isn't that awful? So, you know, crush means. Third wife, he had a third wife, and he was um, just non-committal. When uh, uh, she is away, then she misses her. And when she is there, then somehow she doesn't like it sometimes. I mean, he doesn't like her, you know. Like that. Sometimes uh, uh, he wished uh, not to be his wife that much, okay? Sometimes. Fourth wife, originally very beautiful, much more beautiful than the first wife, but she was now skin and, and bone together because he didn't take care of her. No good clothes and so on. Barely surviving. But, but she worked every time, all the time. She was like a maid, okay, cleaning and cooking and all the time, 24 hours. Such, okay. One day he was ordered to leave the country. Okay, leave the country. So he went to his first wife. You see, the king orders me to leave this country. I have to go, and I have no choice. There's no way not to go. No way. My billions of dollars, that's not going to help me. Okay? I must go. Would you come with me? And, and then, what? no, 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 I don't want to come. Go with you. Go yourself. I don't care. I, mean, I don't want to go. I like this world, you know. The other world, I don't know. I'm, I'm not going to come. Very disappointed. And then second wife, he said, would you come with me? And, no, why? The first wife you loved her so much, he's not, she's not coming. Why should I go? In the first place, I didn't have any... Uh, intention to come to you, but you snatched me, you robbed me uh, from others and kept me, okay? You didn't love me at all. You, you have no love of me, only attached to me. I don't want to go with you. Very much disappointed. When went to the <coughs> um, third wife, asked, would you come, the third wife? Oh, no, no. First and second wife don't want to come. Why should I go? Did you care for me? Actually, you didn't leave me at all. I, I, I don't want to go. But uh, I'll come to the boundary of the border of the, of the country and I'll say goodbye to you. Okay? That's what he said. All my disappointment. And went to the fourth wife. And she said, would you come with me? Of course I will come with you. All my life I served for you. And I was glad that I will go with you. So he left the country which he loved to a foreign country, which he doesn't know, with the fourth wife. What is the uh, analogy the Buddha gave? First wife is your body. Your body. Your body is uh, your first wife. You know, you wash, eat, comb, make up for the women. And, uh, your body is to your first wife. Now, going to the other country means dying. You die. At a certain point, you die, don't you? And there's a line which when you cross, you never come back. So death. Going to the other country means dying. So the body cannot follow you when you die. Of course, okay? And what about the second wife? It's a wealth. You know, the wealth, billions of dollars, wealth. Can he take a penny? No way. He can't 
take even a penny with him when he dies. Like Billy Graham was saying on, on the, the stadium, how much, how would Hughes leave when he died? I mean, did he take a, a penny? I still remember. You know the crusade, the Billy Graham? No, every, he left everything. He cannot take anything with him. Now, so third wife is your relatives. Sometimes your mother-in-law. Sometimes your father-in-law. Or, or your, your wife and son and, and daughter and so on. They are relatives. So uh, just as the third wife says, okay, I'll, I'll come to the border and say goodbye. When you die, these relatives come to your burial site and shed a few drops of tears and show their uh, you know, sadness, and then after 10 days, they forget everything. <laughs> okay, that's the, the third wife. Okay? And what is the fourth wife? It is your soul, your mind. Mind. Remember, you didn't feed your uh, 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 fourth wife well. You don't feed your mind. You don't take good care of your mind. When there are dirts, like three poisons, greed, anger, and so on, you don't care. So you have to go there with those dirts to the uh, 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 other world. Are you with me? So if then man were, or had been wise, he should have taken good care of his fourth wife who worked so hard all the time. Are you with me? In the first place, wash off her face and make up some and remove all the dirts. Dirts are the three poisons. You know that? Three poisons. Greed, anger, and... So he had to take the mind with all those dirts. This is a very interesting story from the Buddhist scriptures. Okay? If I were a Zen master, I can quit here because there's something which I cannot talk. Okay? <clears throat> but I have to do this. If you look at, so is this, what is then the uh, doctor's operating knife mess, messer? That is Prajna Paramita. You recited. Prajna, Pramita, Hridaya, Heart Sutra, you know, Heart Sutra. And the other one is the uh, Vajra, Cherika, Prajna, Pramita Sutra, Diamond Sutra. Vajra is the uh, Indra, you know the Indra's god, Indra, the Indian god, Indra's thunderbolt to destroy things. So Vajra, Cherika, Kara, Diamond Kara, uh, Perfection of Wisdom Sutra is the title of the sutra. <clears throat> we need Indra's uh, thunderbolt to break all those horrible three poisons. You know how enormous they are. Sometimes it covers the whole world, your anger, greed, and so on. It messed up like Wall Street a few years ago. You know what I mean? Greed and the cost millions of people great pain is the greed greed plus stupidity delusions you know delusions put together they create a hell big big hell and that's the world now what is the content of the wisdom prajna that is emptiness Got it now? What did I say the title of today's talk? Tell me, what was the title of today's talk? Shunyata works wonders in daily life. Shunyata is the content of a prajna. Why? Emptiness is. The enlightened ones, learning from the, uh, the Buddha, from the Diamond Sutra, the main point of the Diamond Sutra is this. The Subhuti asks the, uh, the Buddha, 
how should one who has an aspiration to develop the uh, Anuttara Samyak Sambodhi, which is the supreme enlightened mind or body mind, or Salva Junana, total knowledge, omniscience, how should those uh, men and the women who had an aspiration to become enlightened, they have the supreme enlightened mind, how should they have their mind abide, first one, and how should they subdue, conquer the mind, that's the point. Again, the mind. Here, the mind is the deluded mind. The mind which are made up by four ejects. E J E S ejects. Ejects an illusion, you know. When you drive a, a hot summer day, you see a river running, don't you? On on the highways, really river. But when you get there, there is no river. That is the eject. Something which is unreal is, is produced out there. There are four ejects in your mind. Since I don't have time, uh, cut out the things and then simply give the, the sixth patriarch of Zen Buddhism, Hui Ning's interpretation of the four ejects. First, first is ego, okay, ego. All the troubles are starts because of me. Anyone who is against me is my enemy, and I'll kill you. Something like that. Me comes first. Everything. So that is interpreted as anger. No, 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 greed. I have a greed to make me happy. Okay? So the greed is the interpretation of the ego by when. And the second is a person Person means not me, other people. I get angry at them if they don't do uh, the way I want them to do, anger. So uh, the eject of a person out there is interpreted as anger. You know, uh, anger. Remember, anger is the most difficult emotion to control, anger. And the third is the, uh, that's called the eject of simply living beings out there, many of them. And that uh, is interpreted as a, a delusion, stupidity, okay? So we have all three of the three poisons. Greed, anger, and, uh, and the delusions. And finally, uh, the eject of life, which is Huineng interpreted as a, a, a attachment, okay? Greed is something you have to get something you don't have yet, it's greed. Attachment is something you have already and you want to keep that longer, including your life. I don't want to die. Are you with me? So, according to the Diamond Sutra, this is the heart of the Diamond Sutra, which has 32 chapters. The main point is how to subdue, how to conquer, the, uh, the, the four ejects in the, the Buddha answers throughout. Subhuti has 27 questions, 27 questions out of 32 chapters. And uh, one, of, one of the things is this. If you make donations uh, to other people and help others with the seven treasures, gold, diamond, rubies, and, and, and as, as fire, and so on, which will fill the universe if you make that much of a donation that is not as great, not as meritorious as simply explaining one of these four line stanzas to others. I do mean, if you understand, keep it, and explain to others so that uh, you can remove the source of the four ejects or three poisons, that will be greater in merit than uh, making a donation, dana, giving with uh, seven treasures which will fill the whole world. Are you with me? But what are they? Look at that. Um, every, the, from chapter five we have, 
everything with a form, that is the first line. The form is unreal, the second line. So everything which is a form is unreal. I mean, the phenomenal world which we experience don't have reality, substance. They are all empty, okay? So all forms are, if you see them as empty, then you see right away the Buddha, Tathagata. Okay? Normally, this stanza is taken as the main uh, stanza of the whole Diamond Sutra. And uh, from chapter 32, it says, all phenomena are, here phenomena, uh, the everything which is a form. Phenomena means that something came into being and eventually it will go out of being. It's a phenomena, okay? Ah, uh, like a dream, second line, an illusion, like a bubble, and like a sh shade. No, shadow, I'm sorry, the shadow, okay? Not shade, shadow. Also like a dewdrop and like a lightning. The third line is about the human lifespan, so short. Thus should you meditate upon them. So this is another four-line stanza. This teaches the essence of what is called emptiness, okay? Everything which has a form is empty of reality. Regard them. Everything including internal and external. When you get angry, tell yourself, oh, this is not real. Unreal. Fortunately unreal. Remember it's real, then what? It will never go away. It will control you the rest of your life. Fortunately they are also unreal. So, shunyata, emptiness works wonders how. When somebody makes you angry, then instead of uh, exploding into anger, right away, shed the light of this emptiness, then anger will subside. Okay? And that's the way you change your hell to paradise. I think I, actually the main point of the uh, talk at the bottom there is about uh, prajna, jnana. Prajna is the wisdom, jnana is the knowledge. Uh, and the prajna means the prajna paramita, going to the other shore with wisdom. Okay, and uh, Junana means Salva Junana, total knowledge, total knowledge, complete knowledge, or omniscience, which the Buddha had. So Prajna Junana includes all this. First of all, you cross the river to the uh, 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 other shore, Nirvana, which you read in the Hatha Sutra, remember? All the Bodhisattvas, by relying on Prajna Paramita, they subdued, saved themselves all the distress and so on. Eventually they reach nirvana, bodhisattvas. What about the Buddhas? Buddhas attain finally by relying on prajna paramita. Buddhas attain anuttara samyak sambari, supreme, perfect enlightenment. Okay, that's it. So prajna paramita is the mother of all Buddhas. In the Diamond Sutra Yurida. Prajna Paramita is the mother of what? All Buddhas come from emptiness. Okay? I hope you got some message from this one. Emptiness, which is the object of wisdom, really. So all the time you live awake, not in dreams, not in nightmare. Stay away. Get out of the dark room and see the broad daylight. And uh, also Prajna Janana is like uh, the doctor's operating knife messer. Cut off. It, it is really sharp. So in adverse conditions, instead of you know, confronting those enemies, stand one step back and get ready with the razor sharp Prajna Janana. You can change your hell to a paradise, and I guarantee you, if you have that, the rest of your life, or eternal life, you will always live in peace and in paradise. <laughs>